What is going on guys? So today I got a video for you. So people wonder, how do you kill raid bosses? Raid bosses are always a, uh, a big you know, topic on here. They either don't know how to get to them, they don't know what they drop, they don't know how to kill them. So I figure I'll make this video and we'll go over it. Alright, so the first things to know is how to get there. So if you're maxed, you have the best chance of getting there the best, the, qu the quickest way and whatnot. If you have the um, green rank, which is contributor, $100, you can get there. Um, if you have an explorer's backpack, which is in mystery boxes and vote shops, you can get there. And then if you have time, you can walk there. So let me find my explorer's backpack, explorer. Yeah, not good at 116,000 of them. Woo! That's just a, that's just a visual glitch. All right, so for a normal person who has none of the things I just mentioned, do Kong Kong Edge, and you can walk to Ice Mountain. So Ice Mountain is the one that is next to Edgeville, not White Wolf Mountain, which is next to Catherby. People always sort of make that mistake. Um, you're gonna want to walk over here, and then it's on Ice Mountain towards towards the top. What you're looking for is this thing called an Orb of Light. So I know this is going to be kind of annoying to watch if you already know what you're doing, or if you have one of these items, then just skip ahead a couple minutes, I guess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just keep walking down here. Uh, your drops, if you die on one of these bosses, keep in mind these are difficult bosses, so it's very possible you'll die. Um, I'd recommend at least having the Explorer's Backpack. It's in the vote shop, and it's from Mystery Boxes. Uh, it's untradeable, but it'll, it'll teleport you there. Um, and then obviously Max Cape is really good as well. I would, I would definitely recommend having one of these items before you do raid bosses, but you by all means, feel free. It's like somebody was just walking here. Yeah, somebody was just here. So you have this orb of light here, and when you click it, you'll have the option to go to one of the four raid bosses. So the backpack basically teleports you to Ice Mountain, where I'm standing, so it saves you that walk. Boom. There you go. Uh, max cape, if you teleport to the max guild. There is an orb of light right now. I can't go to the contributor zone because I only have the blue rink, but it's basically on the left side of the bank. All right, so now you know how to get there. Let's uh, let's figure out what we're doing. So we'll start off with Tecton. Tecton is the one that you're gonna mage. So in terms of gear, bring your mess, your best mage gear, whatever you have. That's what you're gonna want to bring. So let me show you what I've got here. All right, so you're gonna want to get your best magic gear. And you're going to want to get on Ancient's Ice Barrage. is kind of a necessity here. Uh, you might look at my uh, staff and go, what the hell are you using that for? I don't have a better staff. I'm not showing you, like, the best gear possible. I'm showing you the best gear I have. Uh, if you're wondering what's up with the lag, my internet is being rough right now. Hopefully it doesn't affect this video. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, once you're on your Ancient's, uh, I'm going to be manually casting. Uh, you're going to want to really, like, get on, like... Get an ancient a staff of the dead or an ancient staff, something better. But this is the best I have. So uh, yeah, here's a quick look at the gear. You can do this with the lowest gear. This is the easiest one. Uh, so let me show you how it's done. And uh, you already sh already showed you how to get there. Just get there however you can. Hopefully no one is there. That'll kind of affect the video. There is only one of each boss. So if someone is there, you have to either crash them or work together. Luckily no one is here. Cool. So you're going to want to pray. Praying is more useful now than it used to be. Now, the way this one works is he hits very, very hard and very, very strong. Now, if you have a spirit shield, that'll help you a little bit, but it's not crazy necessary. Um, it doesn't have any other style other than melee, so if you can barrage it, you're good to go. Now, you saw I ran there. Now, most people don't necessarily understand that mechanic. The reason you're running there is the, the logic behind it is to prevent safe spotting. So uh, what you want to do... Is, I know he's a big NPC, but every single NPC spawns on a one-by-one -one tile. So he spawns somewhere around here. You don't want to leave that area too far. So you want to get him frozen. As you can see, this is a very difficult boss. I didn't. I mean, I said it was the easiest, but I didn't... I didn't oh, that, that needs to be switched. It is the easiest, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. So as you can see, it's pretty simple right there. It just got froze. I believe you can get six attacks in. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, John is actually better at Tecton than I am. He's like, he kills us all the time. Everybody sees his loots over you. So um, hopefully I don't lo look too foolish here. And uh, free, freeze, freeze, freeze. Okay, cool. And you don't, what you want to do is you don't want to run away too far. That's the problem a lot of people mis make. Uh, that's a mistake that a lot of people make, rather. <laughs> Um, if you leave too far, like if I went, I'll just show you exactly what happens. If I go too far away 
and then I try to click him, it's going to make you run to him because it doesn't want you to save spot. And when you run to him, you're going to get hit. So don't stay in too, you don't have to stand too obnoxiously far away. You just want to stay pretty close. And it's not necessarily where he's at, it's where he spawns. That's the thing you have to keep in mind. Um, shit. He does have a stunning attack. Stunning attack is actually somewhat decent because it... Okay, whew. Because the stunning attack, um, for whatever reason, whenever he stuns you, he tends to want to stun you even more. So, um, oop, oop. almost just try to, I'm like, try to attack it. So it's pretty simple. I, this, I'm making this look a lot harder than it is, but you get the gist of it. And it'll go a lot better if you don't have to manually cast. Um, if you have friends that can like barrage it, this is definitely the easiest one with friends. Okay, should be good right here. No, I splashed. Oh, I got lucky with that eight. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, but you get the gist of it, so I'll show you uh, what the uh, final mechanic is for that boat. Also, if you do die here, sometimes your items are going to be floating in the air. The reason why is if you look on the minimap, there is a smithing icon. Um, if you are familiar with this area on Old School, there's actually a furnace right here. And sometimes, even though the furnace isn't technically there, sometimes it like spawns on top of it. So don't panic. Uh, that's, that's exactly why. But uh, loot your stuff and proceed to... <laughs> not not die again but yeah the thing you want to keep in mind is don't go too far from the boss there's no reason to be too far just be out of his attack distance and that's all see right here is perfect no reason to run any of it it gets really frustrating when you run to it because it's going to hit you no matter what and most of the time it's going to take your prayer off or it's just going to hit really high so you're definitely going to want to just stay in this distance and as you see magic does do um, I, I believe it's double damage on this boss even though it does have a hefty no amount of health so all in all it's not that bad you, 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 you ideally want to try to get like a refreeze in and then hopefully you see like right there it's very possible possible to die <laughs> this boss is kind of fun with teams just because even though it's so e you, it's so easy you kind of get into like this uh, rhythm so if you have like three people there you get into this rhythm and no one's like really taking any damage and then all of a sudden you get destroyed so it is very it's very interesting to do with teams um, it's the easiest one but it does it does require a little bit of pay attention so I'll show you the last mechanic and we'll move on to the next boss all right so when it's nearly about to die Hopefully I can kill it before it comes to get me. I'm so low on food. I'm really bad at Tecton with this gear. I don't do Tecton on this account. In fact, this I wouldn't be surprised if this is like my third or fifth kill or something like that. I definitely wouldn't recommend manually casting it. That just does not seem effective. Uh, another strategy you can do is to try and run away. The problem with that is I believe it only works on the south side, which I have to run and make it. Okay, whew. 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 Alright, can we kill it? Can I kill it? It's so... I, you know what? I'm probably going to die, and I'll show you exactly why. If I can even kill it, I'm gonna... I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Okay. Did I get it? <laughs> the reason I'm showing this is because, like, uh, this is how you kill the boss. I'm just not good at it. Uh, if you have... Uh, any suggestions on how to help people further let let them know in the comments but uh yes as it dies i believe that should be death no this thing just does not want to die it's like it's like health like okay there we go so yeah as it dies you do take a little bit of damage so just keep that in mind so when i was at 15 health i probably would have died so that's that boss it's not as hard as i probably just made it look let's move on to the next one Alrighty, so to kill Vespia, you're going to want to bring your best range gear having a serpentine helmet is very helpful because of its poison attack, you'll still take the 20 damage, but you don't get poisoned. I strongly recommend getting one. If you can't get one, it's not completely necessary. Just bring anti-poisons. Anti-poisons should be in the shops and whatnot. Bring your best range gear as for um, exactly what you're using. No, you know, no real need. There's no... I think Twisted Bow might be good against here, but I assume if you have Twisted Bow, you don't necessarily need this guide's help. Uh, so get there the same way, through the Orb of Light. And um, this one, it, we're going to do a little technique that is not... You know, um, there's Vespula right there, second one. It's, um, it's allowed, I'll just say that, and you'll see what I mean. All right, so what you're going to do is, this is a little bastard. So this one does hit through prayer, but all in all, it's not too difficult. This one, you know, might even be easier than Tecton, honestly. It, it just depends on your, you know, how good you are in your preference. So as you can see, everything's pretty simple here. As you see right there, your Serpentine Helmet saves you from Vespa's Venom. If I took it off, I would have taken poison damage there, and I would be poisoned 20s. So it would be a um, pretty, you know, pretty unfortunate... Uh, you take a lot of damage, and that can, that happens, you know, constantly. So that's why the anti-poison's not very good, because the anti-poison won't... won't um, 
it, it, it won't really give you any immunity. So the second time it does it, like, you'll just constantly have to be keeping, keep sipping antipoison. So I strongly recommend getting a syrup helm. They're only about 50 mil or so, so. As you can see, just kill it. And then once it gets to 500 health, it's going to spawn two little uh, little workers or soldiers or whatever. And I'll show you that in a sec. I might get uh, 500 mil rage experience. I know that's quite totally unrelated, but yeah. So it should be happening soon here. If we can do the damage. Uh, so what you're going to want to do when it happens, don't stay here. It doesn't seem worth it. So what you're going to want to do is... Oh, did just gain health? <laughs> yeah, there we go. So there's the minions. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to teleport. You see right there it says your attacks are blocked. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to teleport out, pray melee, and then teleport right back in. So this doesn't really work if you don't have one of the quick teleports. I guess you can do it if you walk. It's just annoying. And then you're going to go back there. The reason for that is the boss will no longer be aggressive. Uh, the minions still are, but you can just pray melee and AFK tank them. So this one could theoretically be easier than Vespula, or you could just say that I have more knowledge with Vespula than I do <laughs> with Tecton. So yeah, just pray melee, kill these. And, uh, and then once they're dead, pray mage and continue with the boss. So this one's not hard to do at all. There's no other crazy mechanics. Uh, this one, again, drops the Ancestral and the Kodai. I would not recommend using Ruby Bolts E here. If you use Ruby Bolts E here at the exact same time, it's about to trigger its, um, sp where it spawns the little minions. It might spawn four if you happen to Ruby Bolt spec at the exact same time you trigger it. So I wouldn't bring Ruby Bolts here. Just bring Dragon. Or if you are using Ruby Bolts, bring something to switch when it's a little bit closer. But as you can see, this is a pretty simple boss right here if you have Syrup Helm. Trust me, it's a lot harder than it looks if you do not have it. So that's why this one is actually pretty crucial, 50 mil. Um, whereas on Tecton, Spirit Shield is not that good. In fact, I should probably make it better, but that's a, uh, we'll save that for another day. So as you can see, only used uh, you know the four food here and should be able to get the kill. And let's totally clutch out a loot. That would be awesome if we actually got like a loot. Okay, nearly dead. Let's get the live reaction of me getting a Kodai Wand. That's what I would want, so I don't have to use that trident anymore. Kodai Wand would be um, awesome. Don't stand next to it, by the way, because that weird animation is the melee attack. I've just never fixed the animation. Um, it's not that crazy, but it's unnecessary damage, so try not to take it. But, uh, yeah, nothing too fancy with that loot. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next one is Mutadown. Mutadown is pretty easy as well. It's just less... Us killed because it doesn't have any crazy amazing drops or anything. Uh, so what you're going to want to bring is your max melee gear. Crush is preferred. Um, Legend is kind of better than the Elder Maul because the Elder Maul is too slow. So if you have Elder Maul or Bludgeon, use that. But Bludgeon beats it. I'm trying to like come up with a way to make Elder Maul better. It's just with the code limitations we have right now. Um, it's just hard to make the Elder Maul good. So <laughs> Bludgeon it is. I believe Rapier works here as well, but it shouldn't. I did a recent change, and I honestly haven't tested it with a Rapier, and I don't have one now. So I'm not 100% sure if Rapier is still best in slot here, but that is an expensive item. So again, if you have that, you probably know how to kill these. So uh, same process, Mutadile, Pray and Melee. Actually, I should set up our Quick Prayer real quick. It's always better to set up your Quick Prayers. And uh, Sip Your Thingy. You got Specs. Unload them. I believe Specs are overpowered regardless of which style you have. Specs seem to be pretty good on here as you see from that. Uh, so then if we turn this on, should be super weak to crush now, so should be um, able to kill it pretty effectively. It can kind of combo you, similar to like Venonatus and Callisto on old school if you're familiar with those mechanics. You can sort of just get dropped immediately, but as you can see, um, I'm doing a, a lot of damage on it. Uh, these Karambuans are actually pretty good food because they don't have any ticks between them, so you can spam and click food. That's why I'd recommend bringing these. Um, if you're an Iron Man, Iron Man cannot fish these or buy them from the shop, but the spooky boxes give them. So if you're watching this video around the time it comes out and you're an Iron Man, get spooky boxes because Krombons are worth it. In the future, we're going to have a Krombon method. I just kind of haven't figured out exactly how I want to do it yet. I feel like it's such a useful food that it shouldn't just be done lightly. It, it deserves to be good. But as you saw, there's a 51 there. So yeah, it can like stack. I don't know if it stacks through, pray, um, through prayer, but as you can see, it's not too bad here. This way. It's funny because I said Tecton was the easiest and now it feels like I'm having so much trouble. I had like so much trouble with Tecton and then these I'm just breezing through. Um, I'm just not good at Tecton and I don't have the best gear. But This one's not too bad. I um, I don't even know if I've ever killed... You know, I probably killed this on release. But maybe I'm speaking too soon because it seems like... It seems like... Uh, I believe it does. Seems like we're getting... Uh, well, we should be fine. We should be fine for this kill. Bludgeon will hit like 70s and stuff like that. It's just the, the slowerness of it. Slowerness. I don't know. That sounds like stupid. 
but the slowerness of it makes it not worthwhile. But uh, yeah, this one isn't too bad. It doesn't have that much of defense. It's more of like a, an offensive one. And as long as you have your your food, I've heard some people like to suicide it. They um just bring five items and suicide it. I don't know how effective that is. That's just something I personally don't ever like doing because it just feels cheap. But by all means, try it out and let me know. Hopefully, we can kill this with the four food left. I <laughs> uh, rip. I don't like the way the Infernal Max Cape looks. If you're wondering why I have both, but. Uh, yeah, there's no crazy mechanic to the re for like the rest of this. In fact, there's really no mechanics at all. There's nothing you need. Um, I think I, I it, it really it's just like crush weapons is all you're really looking for. But that's um, it's not too hard to come by. There's a, there's a few of them in game. So yeah, that is this one. Let me uh, finish this bad boy up and get ourselves. Uh, I guess dragon claws would probably be the best thing from here. I wouldn't mind a dragon sword. I've always wanted to try one. I, I'm pretty high on the sword. But I've never really had the ability to test it, because no one will sell it, and I don't have one myself, and I'm not going to test it on uh, Jamie, because that just seems retarded. So let's get a dragon sword right here. Let's eat just in case. Dragon sword. Oh. <laughs> All right, next one. All right, so the last raid boss we have is called Vasa Nestero. Now Vasa Nestero is the hardest one. It's kind of like Nex. I modeled it after Nex. It has a lot of health. It does a lot of damage and you need people. It's possible to sell though, but it's going to take you like 10 inventories depending on your gear. It's definitely tough. Uh, so I've called in a few people. Hopefully we can we can have enough to do it. I'm not sure who all is online right now. It is late at night. Uh, I got 64 people online. Got At least I got that one person joining me, so we'll see. Uh, in terms of gear, what you're going to want to bring is range gear. Now, Ceridome and Halo, or any Halo, is, is very, very useful here because I'll show you that it has this attack and uh, it'll say something in your chat. And Halo protects you from it, so if you don't have a Halo, you can still do it, but it's strongly recommended. So, in terms of how many people you need to kill this, you can do it in a three-man team. I think we probably could do it, but we'll wait and see how many more people show up. In terms of gear, uh, as, you, as I said, the range. Now, Tebow is the best here, so Back Alley will most likely get it. If you don't have Tebow, I would bring ACB with Ruby Bolts. If you're in, like, a mass, it might be worth it to bring it. A um, blowpipe. Blowpipe is better than Sibo. The problem with blowpipe is the more you hit it, the more it hits you. So if you don't want to get targeted, you'll take a lot more damage. And if you have to leave during a kill in a mass, you're gonna lose the kill no matter what. So personally, I would bring the ACB. Um, and you ideally you'd want to do this with like friends that you can trust and you can split the loots. So it's not that big of a deal, anyways. But yeah, best in slot is the Twisted Bow. So I'm gonna get a couple more people together and we will show you. And in terms of your prayer, what you're gonna want to do. Uh, this boss is gonna. It, there's nothing to pray. It does damage through prayer. So what you're gonna want to do is pray redemption, and Eli. Redemption is actually really useful. We have got three people here, technically four with craze. Uh, we'll get started now. Uh, in terms of mechanics, like I said, there is the darkness attack. I'll kind of show you that. I'll take my halo off in a little bit as well to show you how much damage it does. Um, it teleports you around, as you saw. Jake just got teleported. That doesn't do any damage, so it's not really that necessary. It's, it's not really anything you have to worry about. Just um, you know, if it happens, just be careful. It doesn't use a melee attack, so honestly, it serves no purpose. I just, I figured why not. So, as you saw, the ruby spec right there hits 200. That's why you want to use rubies. Rubies are very powerful here. Twisted Bow does out hit it, but if you're not in a group with Twisted Bow, um, actually, Blowpipe out hits it as well just because of how fast it is, but like I said, you don't want to take that damage. So, we haven't hit, been hit with the darkness attack yet. Um, when you have the Halo, the reason for it is because he's probably soaking up a lot of damage and whatnot, so. Um, let me just take it off. I'll show you what it is without it. Hopefully we can trigger it. Uh, if these people do want to do a couple kills, we will. Um, as you can see, it's not too hard. It was changed a lot um, to, make, to sort of balance it out. And At this point, I think it's perfect the way I want it as a developer. And um, in-game, I think it's still pretty tough. It is definitely the hardest boss by far. I think everyone sort of agrees with that. If you need three people for boss, it, it's definitely the hardest boss. Because I'm pretty sure you can solo Corp. So Corp doesn't really uh, cause you any problems. I think any style will work. Well, at least magic will. You can't melee it. Its melee defense is, is too high. I mean, you could. It's just not very effective. So I'd, I'd strongly re recommend ranging. Unfortunately, it's not triggering that darkness attack. So I can't show you that. Um, maybe I should have brought <laughs> a blowpipe just to, you know, get the aggro and trigger some of these attacks. Uh, definitely about to hit the uh, 500 meter range experience. Let me get these slots open. The mystery boxes will go on the floor, but why, why, why put them on the floor? 
I can put it in this inventory. Come hit me, hit me with the darkness attack. I, I kind of like I have to record it live because if it goes away, um, you know, then that doesn't do me any good. This video is probably way longer than it has to be, but hopefully you guys don't mind that. If you want me to, oh, it goes on the floor anyways. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> uh, there's 500 mil ranged. Nice. Let's open these up. Woo, bookcase. If you ever wonder what these do, they give you a random tome. So, why is that? All in all, I'm not very good at loots, but the, the good thing about mystery boxes is no matter what, you get the donated credits, so that's always good. Yeah, not not even one time it hit, the, hit me with the darkness attack. Um, so I'll probably just have to explain it. Uh, it looks like we have enough people here to keep killing it, so I, I guess what I'll do is I'll pause and resume, and then, um, no, you gotta see it. That's the, it's like, it's annoying, because, like, you have to see it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'll just keep recording. I'll, I'll edit this out, I guess. That's probably the best way to do it. Alright, so as you saw right there, the dark force consumes you. So it was kind of hard to see because someone is uh, was was underneath me. But if you saw, it did use my um, heart prayer. Uh, so basically what that how that works is it hits you three times and it hits you... Um, like it, it, it actually hits you as well. So technically you're getting hit four times and it is a lot of damage. I think it can cap out at... Um, the, well, the, the, the special attack caps out at 45 and then it's whatever this thing's max hit is um, which I don't think can one shot you if you're 99 um, hit points but it can darn well do <laughs> it does a good, pretty good job so with the halo you completely negate that damage so as you saw that took like three oh, oh just happened right there we actually got saved uh, you know what? shit I'm, I'm, I don't want to have to like I don't want to leave we'll just switch to uh, ACB but uh, yeah so that is it for mechanics this thing does nothing else you can see it does teleport you around but that's not very problematic at all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed.